Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin's mazurkas. Today we focus on mazurka opus 24 number 3 in A flat major. This mazurka is rather short and it's not so popular like the other three in this opus. I don't know why. Uh, I, I, I find it very cute and beautiful, but indeed, in fact, we have only one short melody and one short intermezzo and then everything ends. So it's very, very short. And probably uh, the problem with popularity of this mazurka is that the, the next one, Opus 24, number 4, is so popular and is so uh, so big and uh, so special, poetic, that somehow this mazurka is not that popular. But, of course, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe there are some uh, of you for whom this mazurka is very special and uh, favorite. It's always like that. And this is fascinating in music that everybody can have its own opinion and, and uh, of course, own taste, right? So anyway, let's, let's listen a little bit on, let's listen to this. It continues. It, nothing new. Nothing new happens here after this short intermezzo that you just heard. Uh, this one. Okay. So, <coughs> what do we have here? First of all, I like to think in this mazurka about the attitude of painting uh, in with music painting uh, with the sound. Uh, sometimes, well, we can get inspiration, we musicians can get inspiration from a lot of things, from nature, from poetry, from literature, novels, from, from other people, from sculptures, and from paintings also. All depends on our imagination. And I think this mazurka is provoking our imagination very much and I want to share with you my idea and my image. For me this mazurka is like a portrait of a young beautiful girl. I always when I play this mazurka I always imagine Chopin sketching and painting with the sound the portrait of beautiful young girl, maybe the girl he loved uh, during that time it was Maria Wojinska. He wanted to marry her and they, they got engaged and everything was so so beautiful and, and, and of course he he was thinking a lot about her especially because they were far away. So we know when somebody we love is far away we can't stop thinking about her or him. Uh, and, uh, and maybe Chopin was thinking uh, about her and wearing some beautiful dress with flowers maybe you know or maybe this folk polish beautiful dress and uh, and and so as i said for me this melody is a very coquette melody very very happy and uh, and very exactly like a woman very very delicate very a, a bit sensual and uh, listen again okay and here we have something that never happened before in any of the previous mazurkas 
uh, when it comes to phrasing. The first phrase is, the first melody, the first phrase is normal. We have like a question and then answer. But then what happened here? And stop. And this stop is very strange. It happens two times here. Um, the fermata, so stop, right? Uh, and and uh, we should play it a little bit louder because it's forzato. But the, the phrasing, the, the, all the singing is just stops. Um, so there is no narration. And that makes me think about this girl. Uh, maybe she's walking through the field full of different flowers. And she is walking, maybe she has some flowers in her hand, but then suddenly she looks right and she, s she can see some beautiful flower that she, she never saw before. So she is so surprised that she stops. She stops and she bow to uh, smell the scent of this flower. Um, or maybe something else. Maybe she can suddenly she heard some beautiful bird so, and she stopped and she listened to the bird, how beautiful he sings. And or maybe she stopped because she thought about her her beloved one for a while and thinking what to do and then she continued. And this continuation is so cute. Listen, so I play for you from the beginning. stop and the end and this ending here is a little bit like a waltz it's not really a mazurka but more like a waltz why waltz i will tell you later so please wait a little bit uh, close to the ending um, another thing very interesting in this uh, first part is that like in all the opus I told you in when I was talking about number one and number two, the ide fix, the something that connects all the four mazurkas in this opus is the dialogue between men and women, or a group of men and a group of women. Uh, here also we have the men suddenly in this portrait. So maybe we have the portrait of a girl, but there is a man painted like very far away. Um, we have him. or. Well, there is maybe there is Chopin himself a little bit. Can you hear the man in this? Let's listen. But it's not so easy to to hear the man here because uh, he sings uh, exactly mm, the same motif that she and our ear is focused on her. So that's a very, very, um, very, I would say, deep moment and uh, not easy to catch. Of course, the pianist can emphasize the man. And now I, I will do it so that you can hear. And I play it a little bit slower. I think it's easier to listen. A very short melody, but there is, and of course, it, it, it because it repeats many times in this piece, we can differentiate it. We can sometimes we can hide it, and sometimes we can take it up. I, uh, I think uh, it's it's very interesting this dialogue, um, and yes, like I said. Um, of course, this is the mazurka, so we have to focus also on the mazurka rhythm. And now let's think, when can we do this one? When can we do it? We can do it two times. Uh, this is a one option. Um, but usually when we do it in one bar and doing it again in the next bar, in some mazurkas, it ha it works. Like for example, mazurka D major, uh, opus 33. 
This, this, this works because it's a very typical party dance. But here it's not a party dance, so we must be careful so that we don't exaggerate with that. Because then, instead of a girl, we have some, we have some drunk men or drunk girl, depends on what we, what we see. Uh, dancing or whatever or playing so I I don't think this mazurka is I think this mazurka is very very uh, soft and very gentle let's listen again uh, and let's try to do maybe on the second bar I, I do the mazurka rhythm this and what is this and dolce okay so of course this is my imagination now i want to show you uh, a little bit the work of the pianist and uh, of course the work with the imagination so this was in my imagination a woman but now let's imagine that i don't see the woman here that i I can see here a, a boy or a man. Let's say it's a man for me. How I would play it as a man? Just listen. So this is more like a man. And of course it can be. Everything is good here, right? I mean, it depends on our imagination. For me personally, it doesn't doesn't work. Let's imagine now that uh, I'm in love, and I I see here love and dreaming. <laughs> So it's a little different, right? Or now let's imagine that uh, I just don't want to imagine anything, just want to play it very simple, sem semplice, very simple without any imagination. It's nice music uh, because it's Chopin, but I think something is missing. And in generally speaking, in mazurkas especially and in the balladas, uh, we cannot play only notes. We must use imagination because Chopin was using imagination a lot when he was composing them. So uh, definitely, well, well I, I go back to the woman and. Charming, charming woman. Okay, and let's go to the next part. This is like a intermezzo, something that connects parts with it, with themselves. We have here the change of the rhythm. This is not on three, this is on two. It's on two four. So just listen. One, two, 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 one, two. This is one option. Or another option is that one was here, one, two, one, but we can use also one on another. So one, two, one, two. We have two options to count it. We can decide whatever we want. Well, I think the left hand helps us because left hand has... So the 
one should be on the first note in the left hand. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. So this is a little change uh, and it makes this mazurka uh, richer, this part. And then we come to the what? Everything stops. What we have here? Of course, if for those of you who know and love Chopin's music, immediately you know what piece is this, right? This is the... Uh, number two but of course at that time Chopin didn't didn't know yet that he's going to compose ballad number two probably uh, but we'd never know if he had in mind this melody or not or if he used some part of the mazurka to create the, the ballad out of it or he copied well we don't know but I I, I don't think it's a coincidence because well the composers they, they perfectly remember their works usually and uh, especially Chopin, who called his, uh, his, his pieces, he called his own children. Uh, so uh, so I, I, I don't believe it's a coincidence. Well, maybe, maybe this, uh, my idea of a portrait of a woman uh, has a deeper sense, because well, as we know, uh, ballad number two, people say that it's based on the ballad, the Mickiewicz ballad Świtazianka, which is... Uh, which this is the ballad about a beautiful girl who is inside the lake and she comes out and she seduces the boy and then he jumps with her to the lake and die and uh, so this is uh, this the beginning of this ballad number two is about a beautiful girl mm -hmm. and here is the same we come back and now let's go to the end listen how everything disappears it disappears special ending uh, well everything like this appears like in the water like the water was a little bit uh, more stormy and then everything calms down so a little bit like in the ballad number two uh, <laughs> but here here we have another quotation of another piece of Chopin which he wrote later uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I told you about the walls. Can you think about a walls which is similar to this? It's almost similar. So in this mazurka, we not only have mazur rhythms, but we also have the walls. Very, very uh, strange. Maybe, maybe because this woman is not only tan dancing uh, Polish dances, but also she is dancing the walls. Anyway, I think this mazurka is very cute. Of course, it has. Uh, it gives the pianist a bunch of ideas and it provokes the imagination and I strongly recommend everybody to learn it. It's not that difficult, um, I think, um, comparing to others, comparing to the next one, for example, which is really pianistically very difficult. Um, I hope I enriched a little bit your, uh, your imagination or inspire you and I hope you liked the video and I invite you to the next ones. Thank you very much. Inspire